Hi and welcome to my YouTube video on Transnistria. Where is Transnistria, I might hear you ask? Well, it's basically to the east of uh, Moldova and to the west of Ukraine. Some actually say it is still part of Moldova. It is only recognized by, I think, three countries. That could change by the time this video comes into existence. Um, and it is still disputed territory. It's not even recognized by the USSR, which is strange because given the fact that they supported them in the uprising that took place in 1992. But anyway, enough of the history lesson. Um, thanks for watching this uh, YouTube video and uh, enjoy the rest of it. Hey, so despite the fact that I thought I was uh, just visiting another city in Moldova, um, I decided to get, to get a bus to Tiraspol. Um, on that bus, uh, we got to a few army checkpoints and uh, um, one of the checkpoints I had to basically show my passport and basically asked, they asked me how long I'd be staying in uh, Transnistria, which is actually a sort of a, a completely different country to Moldova. Uh, not everyone might be aware of this, but it basically split off from Moldova in 1990 and it has its own currency, it has a border, but it's only recognized by a few countries as being a country. So in just in the same way a lot of Middle Eastern countries do not recognize the state of Israel, a lot of countries in the world do not recognize Transnistria. But effectively, this is a brand new country. Um, although if you look on Google Maps, uh, the big line basically outlines this is Moldova. There's a tiny little line if you sort of zoom in. Uh, there's sort of a, light, light dots that sort of illustrate that this is a, uh, a separate country. Um, when I arrived, uh, bus driver was like, well, where do you go? And I, was, I was, I don't know. I said, drop me in the center. Got dropped in the center. Um, despite having a Moldovan orange SIM card, there's a bit of, there's a bit of advert for you, orange. Um, that worked well in the capital uh, it is terrible here it doesn't work at all uh, I'm not sure if it's because they don't have any um, telephone masks here or something so I basically had to find a coffee shop uh, went to buy a coffee I thought I could use the Moldovan currency obviously I can't I need a different currency um, so I wanted to check into my place the guy is not available for the next three hours I'm basically this is turning into a very tedious day, but at the same time, it's an experience. I'm in a new, you know, it's another country. Um, everyone's so far very pleasant, despite the lack of English. Unlike in Moldova, where they speak Romanian, everyone speaks Russian here. So, hence the division. Um, but now I shall wait until I can check into my apartment, because I don't really want to be carrying my bags around while I'm walking around. I finally checked into my accommodation. Um, biggest hassle of carrying a bag around with you, as I'm sure everyone knows. Uh, it's very difficult to explore and let you see, swing your arms around freely when you're carrying a bag, a suitcase, a backpack, anything. Um, so now I've dumped my bag. Uh, I, it's a nice place. It's very strange. It's called, uh, it's named after Lennon. And uh, there's a, there's pictures of Lenin in the place. There's a, even a, there's a flag. There's the Soviet flag. There's the uh, there's the country's flag. Chininit, uh, Transnistria, Trans, Transnistria, Transistia. It's Transistia or Transist, Transistia. Um, it's actually effectively a country. It's only recognised by three states. Uh, one state isn't even officially recognised as a country in itself. It's a country connected to Georgia. Um, details below on that one. I, um, the KGB are just around the corner from where I am right now. Uh, they, this state doesn't want to be part of Moldova. It wants to be part of, it wants to be a Soviet state. Uh, so there's 
his communist sort of socialism Marx sort of you know connected to this place uh, the um, weird thing is when I checked in he said oh if you're going near the parliament building do not take pictures if you're going near the KGB building do not take pictures it's illegal so I'm gonna see what happens um, obviously if you don't see any footage I wasn't able to get any pictures obviously if you never see this or you find this footage two years late in two years time I guess the KGB family Okay, so what's interesting uh, about this town is a border that kind of goes through the middle. It's a little bit like uh, how Berlin was uh, in the Cold War, East Berlin, West Berlin. Uh, as you can see, I'm now approaching a some sort of box in the road. I don't know if there's a passport guy there, but there has been before. Um, and the line, if you look on Google Maps, I'll see if I can do a, I'll do a screenshot of this map uh, and see if I can post, splice it into this video. Um, it has, it's a strange one, it basically d defines the country. Um, and uh, I guess this is why there's anger with the Moldovans because their country isn't as complete as they, as they would like it to be. But at the same time, this is a country. I uh, probably can't see, but right behind me on the bench in the far distance is a lady selling cat cats from a box actually not cats kittens um i've seen this all over moldova um they sell cats at any opportunity what's kind of sad though is um there's uh, there's a lot of stray cats around so they sort of you know this it contributes to the problem do not buy animals ever if you must have an animal go go to a shelter and you can adopt an animal, but you should never, ever buy animals. On TripAdvisor, this is the number two attraction in, in Tiraspol. Uh, basically telling you there isn't much to do if this is number two attraction. This is General Sorov uh, behind me. Uh, he was a, a famous Soviet general. Uh, the statue sort of commemorates him. And basically this is the the main square in Tri Tripasol. There's uh, obviously a, a big flag here. There's some flags off in the distance. And that's a bit, that's pretty much it. Um, but it's the experience more than anything. Even this is the capital of Transnistia. Transnistia. Uh, so one hopes this capital in over the, over the years will become something. I've spotted something a little bit more interesting. Look at that, there's a church, but can you see what's in front of the church? Similar to a monument I saw in Belarus. Let's go have a closer look. Uh, so just behind me is a tank, um, yep, it's just a tank, but it's a memorial to tank that basically illustrates um, the, the Soviet success during World War II and also the Civil War success of Transnistria. 
uh, Transnistia, I keep saying that wrong, and basically how they've become an independent nation. Um, and uh, this is just sort of a remembrance area. If we look, if we look down, the, down over here, you can see a flame. That is the eternal flame. Now, if you remember my trip to Belarus uh, in the square, which was surrounded by a road, there was an eternal flame there. Uh, obviously, probably lit by the gas supplied by Russia. And in the far distance, which we're going to have a look at in a second, a memorial, basically, to the dead. And let's go have a look. And also, I will be slightly quieter because it's a memorial. What's, um, what's kind of touching here is um, every major soldier general that basically gave his life in the Civil War isn't in a grave 10 miles outside the city or in another place. Their grave is actually right in the center of the city. I mean, this is the center of the city. This is where the tank is. The, uh, the Surah of uh, statue is a little bit further that way, as you remember. And all over the place. I presume the generals have their graves like this because there's a collection of names on. You know, I just I've walked past many names, but here's some more names. I can't. I would imagine not everyone is buried here, but here's some more people that died in the Civil War in '92. And well, I could be wrong. Please correct me on this one because there's no there's no explanation in English, and uh, I have no Wi-Fi, so I will read up on this. Um, it could be Second World War, but these every grave with soil, they, the soldiers died in '92, so I presume that's the Civil War. Um, but it is touching. It is touching.
Okay, so the building to my right, uh, which was just in shot very briefly, apparently I'm not allowed to film, so into the brief shop. Maybe I'll slow it down. There you go. See, right behind me, um, saw it in a shot a moment ago, is a statue of Lenin. Um, I'm going to try and get a closer shot. Uh, I'm going to sweep around, but if I fail to, that's the shot of Lenin. Communism and socialism is not dead here. Look at this. Okay, so while I have a moment and I'm not seeing any policemen or military personnel here at the moment, um, what you possibly saw a moment ago, I'm not sure, um, I have to review the footage, was I was standing in front of a building, possibly police building, possibly military building, possibly KGB building. They had the red stars on the... Um, um, they had the red stars on the gates and then suddenly, uh, you know, once again I was told I can't film. It wasn't as bad as this in Belarus. I mean, in Belarus I can film everything. Uh, Ukraine and no problems. Um, they are a little bit paranoid here, but fair enough. I guess uh, civil war is fresh in their mind. I'm, I'm, I'm now being watched again, right behind me, policeman. I don't know if you can see that, but there's a policeman right up behind that sort of tree. Yeah, he's there. Um, so I'm just sort of uh, taking in the city as much as possible while being watched by policemen. So I'm taking a chance, uh, there's a few families around me who might be able to get away with it, but it could be just being completely paranoid. Uh, the statue of Lenin just here. Uh, basically, the, the road that I've been walking along is called Lenin, uh, Lenin Street, and Lenin has, is still here, just like he's in Belarus and also in Russia. Lenin stands proudly here. Vladimir Ilyich Yulianov, better known to the world as Lenin, leader of the Russian Revolution, writer, statesman, and father of modern socialism, Che Guevara. Another familiar face, uh, Lenin. Time to get something to eat. But he's everywhere, Lenin. I have a slight problem. Uh, no ATM accepts my multiple bank cards. I have Barclays, I have Santander, I have a couple of others, but none of the bank cards work. Not because the bank cards are not working, simple reason the banks do not accept foreign bank cards. Um, I've now tried four ATMs. Um, this is not good. <laughs> this is not good. Um... Okay, so I've been walking for the last hour trying to find the right bus station. Um, I was sent in the wrong direction twice. Unfortunately, when uh, you have a Moldovan SIM card, it doesn't really work that well in Transnistria. I have six gigabytes of data apparently, but I'd be lucky if I can get six megabytes on this uh, SIM card. Um, it's hot, it's a long walk, but 
I guess that's how you travel sometimes. There's no such thing as Uber here. Trying to hail down a taxi is impossible. Um, uh, ugh, but it's okay. This is the general theme when I get to most bus stations. You see? Do you notice something? Noisy television, but no one here. So I just uh, decided to get off the bus in a small town called Dobrosari and it's in tra Trans Transnistria and I have no idea why I'm here um, but I figured not many people have been here there might be a reason for that um, let's have a look see what what I can find sadly the bus stations dropped me on the edge of town so I've stored my bag and uh, I'm thinking I might return to the bus station later and maybe head back to the Moldovan capital um, because it, do, it seems very difficult to get any place in Moldova without he heading back to the capital. Um, that is the plan I think. Let's see if it works out that way. I found a supermarket and the one thing you notice um, they take a lot of pride in presentation here. So this is the centre of Dobrinitsa, uh, well it would seem the centre on the map, there's the residential places behind this building. And obviously the man in silver, uh, responsible for almost the death of I think 7 million people, maybe more, correct me on that one. A lot of people, and yet here he is, celebrated, Lenin. <laughs> Although I must add, um, this statue should be kept for historical purposes, it should not be torn down, so in that case it makes sense, I, so it makes sense and you know what, it's, it's a bit of history. So um, Dobrinitsa has a cinema, it has a music hall, it has some supermarkets, it has uh, a Lenin statue. It's sat beside a river. Uh, the river's a meandering, meandering river. Um, not much to see. Uh, there's a small restaurant blaring live mu loud music next to a lake and uh, has a lot of residential houses. Hmm, that's about it really. Um, at, least I, at least I could say I've been here. Would I come back? I'd have to have good reasons. Dog doesn't want me here. If I was to describe this place, it would feel like um, how you would imagine Soviet 1950s. Um, most of the pavements are very immaculate. I mean, if you look at the you look at the road, you see this. This is all along the road. The sort of yellow green, yellow green. 
along all the road system. It's uh, in far better condition than uh, the capital, in fact. And everything just seems to sort of be quite idyllic, but nothing's really going on. It's got a population of about 27,000. Um, there's schools, there's, uh, um, you know, there's a few shops. There's not much though, um, but it's just the people are plodding along, chilling a lot, chilling, going about their business. And uh, there's all these little, you know, little markings that show the Soviet past. It's sort of stuck in the past in a way. I mean, I'm not holding that against them. It just seems, uh, it seems like there's a different time zone here. I mean, I mean, just to give you some illustration on their love for the Soviet past, I've just been on Lenin Street, uh, the second Lenin Street I've been on today because the other one was in the capital, and this is Karl Marx uh, Street. So, a lot of uh, communist favourites here. Thank you.